we want to now give you a very practical step-by-step -step means of releasing your concerns, your worries, the things that bother you. First of all, we suggest that you take out a piece of paper. You may do this on a computer laptop or a desktop computer for your convenience. We want you to begin to release your concerns. I personally use my laptop computer here and I have a file called release and as I do it I begin by putting the today's date at the beginning of a sentence and then I begin by saying Lord I release to you this particular circumstance or problem I release this person to you and many times I've released a family member who's ill, who has a problem. I might release a parishioner as a pastor who is suffering from an illness. I might release a situation where a person is angry, maybe even with me, but I release to begin with, to let, a per let God know about it. And I acknowledge before God that these things are weighty heavy upon me mm -hmm. and nothing is too big or nothing is too small. Please remember that, that if as you implement, if you implement this into your life, it doesn't matter what it is. God wants us to express it to him and this is a way of expressing it by just saying, I release this to you, I give this to you. Um, and there may be times as you incorporate, if you desire to incorporate this into your life, that you will release it again to God. But as we've had some conversations with you between sessions, um, this might be something that you need to do, is just release something to God. Um, and it doesn't matter how big or how small it is, God wants you to give it to Him. So it doesn't have to be a big thing and it doesn't have to be a little thing whatever it is that's waiting you, you need to give it to God. And this is just one way to do that. To lighten up the conversation a little bit, I use some cartoons. And if you can see this one, uh, this is a deep, very, very big problem they are swallowed by. These are a couple of mice that you see there. And the sign says, you are here. There's a bump inside the snake. And they're in a big problem. They're probably not going to escape this one. And there are problems that are inescapable or very, very difficult. I trust that none of you are in the snake's belly right now in terms of your struggles or problems. Nothing is as bad as these poor mice are facing and discovering. Uh, then there are situations, there are real situations that can be very terrible, but then a lot of our time can be spent in worry things that never will happen. We see this Dalmatian dog, but she has some funny looking puppies, as you see. I believe this to be an impossibility. These uh, spotted kittens are not hers, but they look a lot like her. And she's trying to describe, assumably, to her husband, honey, please, just calm down, let me explain. Uh, and a man who wrote many, some of them wise, some of them just comical statements, was a man by the name of Mark Twain. Perhaps you've heard of him. Perhaps you know very well a number of his sayings, but here's what he said about worry. I've been through some terrible things in my life, some of which actually happened. Part being, part, uh, the point being is that we can be worriers. We can worry about all kinds of things, and they never come upon us but we burned up a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. We've gone through sweat and tears perhaps, worrying, worrying about what might happen, and some of the things we worry about are far from reality. Nonetheless, we have perhaps even lost weight over what might happen. And there are worriers that, well, I found as a worrier that I was, would always find, if I was going to worry, I was going to find something big or small to worry about. And when a big thing was then passed and all was well and the dust clears, I, I found that I would pick up a bunch of little things to worry about until I realized, you know, I've got to decide whether I'm going to be a worrier the rest of my life or not. 
But one of the helps for worrying was this step of simply releasing my concerns, everything, and nothing too small, nothing too great, and I released them. And later on, I would find answers to these, this process of release. Now, at first, you might think this is really irresponsible. There are those who say, let go and let God. And that's a good statement to begin with, and that's what you're doing there. But it doesn't end there, because God will call you into responsibility as well, more than likely to do something about some of these situations that you're releasing onto the Lord. There are action steps. The second step, then, is very important. From that list, make a second list of actions you might take for given situations. What actions might you take? Now, an idea may come to you right during that session of release. Ah, I should go and do this. But wait for the Holy Spirit to tell you what to do. Don't be in a hurry. It could be that, let's say on a Monday, you have a time of release and you've put down 10 things and you don't have an answer or an action point for any of the 10. But during the week, you think about them again and, ah, I think someone just gave me a suggestion about what I could do with this financial situation. Or we, you might read the Bible and find that during a given quiet time, there's an answer for the concern that you've already released on paper. God might whisper to you, you, must, you, you should be doing this or you might do that. And so wait on the Lord for him to give you an answer step. Sometimes we know the answer, but we've been avoiding the hard answer. Perhaps it's to go and confront someone who has hurt us. And instead, we'd rather gossip about it or hold a grudge against that person. And God is saying, go to the person and tell them, you know, you wounded my spirit. You hurt me. You don't want to do that. But God, in this quiet time, is telling you, do it. It's time to do it. Don't waste any more time. Or maybe you've been holding a grudge against someone and it's time to forgive them in your heart. Whether they know they've ever hurt you or not, you have to give, forgive them. Or maybe you know that you've, for, for, you've hurt someone else and it's time for you to go and say, I am sorry. Well, much may take place after we've released our concerns onto the Lord. We've released it and then we start to form a second list and we begin to do what God asks us to do in obedience. I think as we release things, um, the Holy Spirit begins to speak in our lives, in our hearts, and we begin to, as that burden is lifted off of our shoulders, we begin to communicate more freely and we hear better, um, whether it's the Word of God that, that the Scripture is opened up to us and we hear from that or that still small voice that, that speaks to us in our hearts. But as we release, something happens and we, we tend to hear God better, at least I do. So we get an answer to a concern that we've written down. Or maybe it, it, sometimes what happens to me as I release something, then there becomes an attitude of thankfulness or, mm -hmm. Or um, I write another prayer right under that um, about the given situation that I've released to God. There isn't an exact format that takes place here. This has to be something that flows out of you. Because if it doesn't come from you, you won't do it. It has to be how God works this or configures this in you. It's not about us, and it's not about even what we're teaching, but as you go to God and you release things to Him, let it be how He works in you. Each of us is created differently, and we're gonna say this more than once as we talk about um, the whole co concept of release and of um, openness and communication and intimacy with God. But however you do this, whether you follow you know, steps or training wheels that we give you, however you do it, it has to be the way God's wired mm -hmm. you. We yeah. are all different. And we want to give you the freedom to find this quiet time with God the way He's wired you. And it doesn't have to look exactly like it looks for us. 
because even between the two of us, we're wired differently. It looks different for me than it does for Jim. So right now, I want to say to each of you who are, you know, our students or who are listening by tape or DVD, that you have to begin this process the way God has wired you. Let him be creative according to how he's made you. And I'll probably say this again to you, but as you release, let God do it in you. Let it look the way he's wired and made you. And we want to give you the freedom. It's not about us. It's about you and your communication, your intimacy with God. So I want to give you that freedom. God gives you that freedom. The third point then is to make a list concerning what you cannot control. That is very important, what you cannot control. Just recently someone emailed me and said that someone had hurt them, said something false about them. And they wanted to know what I was going to do about it. Now. According to the Word of God, if someone comes to you and says that another person has hurt them, sinned against them, you have a choice. You can do what the Word of God does not say today do, and that is you go and try to correct it for the person. But what the Word of God does say in Matthew chapter 18, if someone has sinned against you, you as an individual go to that individual and tell them about their sin, how they have, maybe they're blind to it. Maybe there's an explanation and they really didn't do it, but you thought they did. Well, it's a point of prayer. My role in this case, okay, is to tell them, the Bible says, go and confront the person you think has sinned against you. Go. I am not to do anything beyond that at this stage of the problem. But you know what my responsibility is? I pray that this person will have the courage to go and confront the person who has said something about them. That is my role. There are many situations that instead of doing, we are to pray. And often ministers, others as well, jump into the middle of something and try to fix it. When their job is to stand back, give some direction to those people who are involved and to pray. Don't be so quick to do before you pray. So begin to make a prayer list. And there are situations where, let's say, a woman, a man is in the hospital, their child's in the hospital, and you may go and comfort those. The one in the hospital, the parents will say, be with them, and you can do that much. But you're not the healer. You're not the one to be there and administer drugs or to do surgery. That's not your calling unless you are such a physician and in that position. Your job is to stand back and pray. You see, God gives us assignments that we can handle, but then he expects us to pray and enter in that he might do what only God can do. You see, you see God won't do my part for me, and I can't do God's part for him. If we get that mixed up where we're trying to do God's part for him and neglecting the little part he's given us to do, we will mess things up. We'll make it worse. I am not Almighty God. I cannot heal the person with cancer, a heart attack, or whatever else. But I can pray to God and intercede. I can also go and comfort, and that is my part. I can confront when God says to confront. And I might say, no, I don't want to confront them, God. I uh, strike them dead. Uh, no, that's not mine to do. My request of God is you, O oh Lord, will you work through me as I go and do my part, which you've asked me to do, and you're not going to do it for me. But I beckon you, I call on you to do your greater good than only you can do. There's a long wandering prayer uh, statement from David Hansen. He says, many Christians have tried to release their worries to God in prayer, but frankly, it just hasn't worked. That is, short prayers haven't worked. How can a short prayer solve the problem of long worry? It is a long time 
uh, it took a long time for anxiety to grip our guts. Only long prayer will release that power. That's why we need time and usually a quiet time of 45 minutes even. 10 minutes is not enough to release our concerns. We've been worrying, we're all tied up in knots and as we slowly take time to pray, all of these situations that we've been bearing come forth and we get release from them. This person, David Hansen, advocates going for walks. As we walk, some of this can be done. And many people are, as Lois says, wired in that way. We're all wired differently. Some uh, are able to do wonderful things, and have wonderful prayers, they walk and not sit. Well, here's the serenity prayer that was beautifully written long, long ago. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. A time for release, that's Sabbath. Releasing critters of all types. But the question is, are we releasing ourselves? Releasing ourselves. Some time ago, a minister who had fallen into immorality with a person in their congregation lost their credentials to preach and they had to go to a secular job, a job of laying carpet. They were good at this and they worked independently as a carpet layer. I talked to this person in the recovery process from their sin and uh, this person described how he was feeling like one of his grandfather's horses who he had watched some time in his youth. At the end of a long day of work, the horses would be unhitched from uh, the wagons and the halters and they would go out in the pasture and they'd start to stomp around and they'd feel such relief. They'd be sweaty, hot, and, and dirty and hungry. But they'd go out in the pasture and they'd roll and they'd feel so relieved and, and free from the work, the burdens of the day. And he said, one Saturday evening after a long work, week of work, I sat down at the supper table and I, I was tired. I was sweaty, I was dirty, I was hungry. <sighs> But I felt like one of grandpa's horses that was released in the pasture. I felt so good. I was finally unhitched from my job of hard labor. Felt so good. And I asked this person, uh, friend, you were a pastor. When you were a pastor, when was the last time you remember being released from your work as a minister? And he thought and thought and he hadn't released himself. I think it was about 10 years ago. That long. And often immorality, other mistakes of anger and, and sin and sorrow are the cause of not releasing our concerns. We've become so burdened and loaded down with them that we f seek some means of release and pleasure outside of what God has provided for us in release like a Sabbath release. If only this man and many others like him and women as well would, would, would re release themselves from the burdens of releasing their concerns to God uh, and then uh, uh, praying that God would show them what they are to do and then doing uh, that which they are to do and then praying unto God to do His part. If only they would release themselves, the burdens of work would not be so heavy that they were driven to do something awful that terminated a ministry or sometimes their, their life themselves. And this is so very sorry. I found that those who learn how to release, relieve themselves of great pressures and, and avoid many awful temptations that harm themselves and others. While we continue being a benevolent project, your kind donations will continue to be vital in fulfilling the calling of TVS ministry. We do count on your gracious support and cooperation. For detailed information, please visit tvsseminary.com. I have a, a, a series of discussion points that, that who might you release? And just taking that one, pause and think about who might you release from his or her burdens of concern? And then also release yourself. Who might you attempt to release from their concerns? If you haven't already, release them. But how about yourself? If you've ever been on an airplane, a commercial flight, the flight attendant comes before the plane takes off and 
gives, gives a demonstration. It says, if when we're at a high altitude and oxygen is lacking in the cabin, an oxygen mask that's usually yellow comes out of the ceiling or comes, shows up from some point in the plane. And make sure that you, you take it yourself firsthand that you take the oxygen mask and put it on yourself before you try to help an elderly person or a child, maybe your own children are there. Make sure you get the oxygen to begin with, then help them. The obvious point is if you go to help some loved one before you get yours on that you may faint for lack of oxygen and no one will get your help and you will not survive, you'll die yourself and others you attempt to help probably won't be helped by you or someone else. And so often as servants of God, we run to help other people and we want them to be served by God, to experience God's grace before we ourselves have received it. And that's a fatal mistake for ourselves in the spiritual realm. We need to first, like Jesus did, go and get our solitude with the Father and then help others find uh, the compassion and their needs through Jesus Christ. Direct them after we have first had our own Sabbath times. And I hope these things make sense to you and you begin to first of all write down your concerns, see if God is directing you to do something in that regard, and then praying about the concern unto God. And often afterwards in my laptop I record uh, a praise. I use a bold print and I said, thank you, Lord, for solving this concern I had. And thank you. It becomes no longer just a time to release, but a time to praise God for their many answered prayers. May God bless you as you release and are released from your concerns. Thank you.